Hey team, this is Eddie Gray. Welcome to the channel, The Modern Creative, where we help you become a Logic Pro power user. Now, before we get started, I just wanted to say a big thank you to everybody supporting the channel. The following is growing. I am so excited, so elated, and I do have some official news that I want to tell you about. I just got a publishing deal to write a book on Logic Pro. I know, it's crazy, right? This is nine years removed from barely starting to do this. And so I'm on a kick right now where I really want to inspire and help others because Logic Pro gave me a second chance at life. It's allowed me to realize so many of my dreams. I just signed another contract for another deal that I can't tell you about quite yet, but it's coming. So stay tuned. Go ahead and follow me on all the various socials and let's keep going up. Thank you for supporting the channel. All right. So look, in this video, I want to talk about the most important files in Logic Pro. Now the purpose here is not only to help you find your files with ease, but more importantly for all of those who are buying a new computer, whether it's Intel or M1, I want you to transition and I want it to be an easy process. I want to help you take all the important files and immediately go into the next chapter in your life. Now, as always, I highly recommend using the tag system within Logic Pro. I find it to be invaluable. For me, what I, I do is I use all the various tags to basically uh, line up with a purpose. So red is video files, orange are songs, pending blue, new ideas, so on and so forth. You have to find your own system that works for you. But the idea being that if I click on any one of these tags, I know exactly what the purpose of that specific tag is. And if we look at the sidebar here, you can see all of the files are gonna pop up that are relevant to that tag. So in the case of blue, for example, this is my track ideas tag. And so every time I get a new idea or I listen to a sample, I go ahead and point the way. So use the tag system with an operating software, but also use the sidebar. Let's say there's a folder somewhere that you want to drag in. All you have to do is drag from the actual source file into the sidebar and you can access it whenever you want. So for me, these are the most important file paths and I'm going to describe in detail how this all works. But let's talk about the, the operating software. We obviously can't talk about the most important files in Logic Pro without it being completely attached to the operating software as a whole. So if we go into my computer, the brain of the computer, we see four primary folders. We have system, which has to do with internal files. We have applications, which has to do with third-party software apps that you've downloaded from the App Store. We also have library, and this is going to be key when looking for all the files that we'll be finding today. And then finally, we have users. The way I want you to think about this is the most important files that you are going to need to access on a day-to-day -day basis are going to be either inside of the operating software library or inside of your folder, the user's library. So when looking for files, these are two places that I want you to get to right away. Now, if you've made it this far, it's because you're a maniac like me and you love details. You like to know the who, what, where, when, why, how. It's very important to you as you operate and as you move forward as a professional. So thank you very much. If you are interested, in really learning this in full detail, I will be providing an extended training. That's just for those of you that wanna take it to the next level. But here's what we're gonna cover now. Channel strip settings and patches. Where are they? Where can I locate them? So this is one of those important file paths. We wanna to go to the brain, Macintosh HD, users, your name, music, audio, music, apps. Here you're gonna find important things, articulation settings, if you're not into that yet, check out one of my former videos. Bookmarks, I have a video on that on the channel as well. Channel strip settings, and then below that, patches. So what's the difference? How do we use this? Well, that depends. Are you using it on an auxiliary track? Are you using it on a software instrument, on an audio track? You can see that 
I have one of these .cst files or channel strip setting files saved within this folder path. And if I zip over to logic and I click atop the channel strip here, the same default audio channel strip exists there. But that's simply because I'm using an audio track. If I was using a software instrument track for virtual instruments, then that would be a little bit different. The difference between a channel strip setting and a patch is that with a channel strip setting, I can only save the plugins and that's it. So it's limited in that way. If there are settings that you use for the channel strip all the time, for example, certain EQs or maybe some tape, then I would use this service here. If there are instruments that you like to use all the time, then I would save it. Um, you can also access these same files here within user channel strip settings. But what if I wanted to save more? I wanted to have maybe a group of tracks together or save the plugins and the bus and sends and the volume position. You can actually do that with a patch. So if I click here, I'm going to hit tab a couple of times to access the library. And then let's go to user patches. Here I have a user patch that's called drum synth. Now let's take a look here. Not only does it have the EQ position saved, okay, but it also can have like the volume position saved as well. So let me go ahead and take this down. I'll remove the EQ and let's see what happens to this when I save this as a patch. So uh, just a quick tip, if you don't ever wanna write the name of this thing down, just cause I know sometimes it gets repetitive, just click on the path there and it should be able to replicate it. So I'll hit save and I'll replace the original setting. Uh, we'll open up software instrument and then this should mirror the settings exactly the way we had them before. So I've got an M1, so you can see that there's a bug here. It's not lining up, but you should be able to save the plugins, their positioning, the pan position, volume position, and then mute and solo state. All right, on to the next one. If you ever really want to know where something is coming from and you need to troubleshoot, pretend like you're saving a file and then start to investigate. So here you can see my name. This is coming into the music folder, into audio, music apps, channel strip settings, and track, not to be confused with either the bus, aux, instrument, or the output track. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel here. So just try and kind of reverse engineer to try and find yourself back home. With a patch, you would do a very similar thing, except you would hit save, and you would try and see where does this go if I save it? And you can see that this specific patch path is saved under users, music, audio, music apps, patches, not channel strip settings, and then under the audio folder here. So good luck with that. Let's look at one more thing and then we'll call it a day. There's a lot of information here. So if you want to access the rest of the info, go ahead and check out the extended training. So in the extended training, I will be showing you exactly how I have filled out my tagging system so that you know where every single file is. But for right now, I wanna look at the components folder. There are two folders. This time, they're both inside of the mainframe. So let's go ahead and open those up. The first one is inside of Mac HD library. The next one is gonna have the important information, Macintosh library audio plugins. So let's open up the second one. This is where we have all of our plugins that are identified by Logic Pro. The other file path, which is kind of a bit strange, but it has nothing in it. So you can see how and why it's important to understand these file paths. You don't wanna be confused as you navigate, not just Logic Pro, but Monterey and every future operating software as we go along here. I highly recommend you back up your components folder just in case something happens or there's a corrupt file. You can always access those, super important. The last thing I wanna to cover today are the presets. There are so many different file paths, it almost drives me mad, but I wanna cover each one today and kinda of show you how it works. If we take a look at Black Hole, we have our user presets and we can find that under the user path file. So let's see here if I can go there. Here are all of the various presets I'm going to find. Now, I don't have any 
uh, presets inside of black hole. But let's say I save something, I go save as, and again, you can study this file path. And if we go back, you can see that I'm under audio, presets, eventide black hole. Let's call this test, and I'll go ahead and hit return. If we go back here and I hit the right arrow key, you can see that test is right there. Let me throw that away, uh, but not before allowing you to see it there. Fantastic. So this is what I want for you. I want you to be organized, know where everything is going and how it's getting there. So we're not talking about a user preset this time. We're talking about what's inside of the plugin. See this specific brand, Eventide, they actually allow you to save within their system. So if I click on load here, you can see that I can import or if I click on save, I can save what's called a .TID file. So if I hit test there, I'll save that under factory presets, okay? So how do we find it? How do we find this test file? Again, we click on load and let's go back. Users, Eddie Gray Music, Eventide. Okay, so users, my name, music, and there's Eventide. Okay, let's open that up. And if I go to folder number one, there's that test file. Let me go ahead and delete that. So that's the first file path. If we look up here, Macintosh library audio. So let's click on the mainframe, library audio. Here we have presets. Some plugin companies for some reason are gonna choose this file path. Other companies are gonna choose other file paths. Let's look at the SSL native drum strip. Let's open up SSL. Same concept, we've got the user presets up here, but if I want to save something within their system, we can save a test. So this file path is under library application support. All right, so let me go ahead and hit save. In this case, a lot of people would get confused because they're looking at the SSL native drum strip and they're not sure what's going on. But of course, now that we're starting to understand, we know this is inside of application support. So if I go down here to solid state logic, so they have the presets for all their plugins, including their native plugins. And if I hover down here under drum strip, there is that test.xml file, and I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. So hopefully this is helping you better understand where you can find your presets. So the first one's Macintosh Library Audio. The second one is under Users. Let's go ahead and locate that. And then I want to find Library and Audio. Okay, so you can see that I saved Library here. I'll show you how to do this in the extended training. This is a hidden user path. There's Audio and here are some presets. So. There's a lot of information here. Again, the reason we wanna use the tag system is because it's right in front of us. I don't have to go back and forth. Let's look for these last two uh, paths here. So this one is under Mac, Users, Eddie Gray. So let's go to the mainframe, Users, Eddie Gray. Inside of the music folder, we have presets here, as I have showed you. And then finally, the last one, let me get out of here. Plugin settings, this is under users, your name, music, audio music apps, and then you have the presets inside of Logic Pro. So if you ever need to find the presets for Logic Pro, you can find that under plugin settings right here. Remember, there's two file paths for plugin settings. So there's a lot to remember there. Here we have nothing for the channel EQ, but that's simply because I haven't created a preset yet. Again, if I go to test, uh, let's go ahead and look at that. And hopefully we get, there it is right there. All right, well guys, there is so much to do. There's so much going on. Thank you so much for everything. I've been able to grow so much because of this work that we do together. So stay up, stay happy, stay focused on what you want. I'll certainly catch you on the next one and I'll catch you on the extended training. I'll see you later.